One of the biggest strengths of the entire Arduino ecosystem is its accessibility, not just to novices who are learning as a stepping stone, and not just to amateurs who want to dabble a little bit but not really get deeply into it, but also to someone who doesn't want to get into it at all, who doesn't want to get involved in the hardware. They know software, or it's just some random person who wants to set up some blinking lights or mess with a robot. And Arduino is absolutely incredible for this. But one of the ways it accomplishes this goal is there's a lot of abstraction and overhead in the software. The bootloader and the program you write are, by microcontroller standards, bloated. This is not a bad thing. This is a trade-off. Think about how you start a program and you just want to have a pin output a digital high or low. You say pin mode, the pin number, output, fairly intuitive, it's an output pin, and then you say digital write, pin number, and then high or low. It's so incredibly easy. Now what if I told you that the actual microcontroller used by the Arduino Uno, and at Mega 328P I believe, has got what are called ports, which are collections of eight pins at a time, and you have to manipulate hardware registers to control data value and data direction for each of these ports to manage what mode it's in and what it's actually doing. I just said a lot of things that a lot of people People would go, what? And they would probably spend the whole day reading an at mega data sheet, or perhaps a couple minutes before they go, never mind. Like I said, it's a trade off. But once you have gotten past the level of novice, once you understand both software and hardware, which means you understand a little bit about how a C compiler works and assembly, you don't have to know assembly, you just have to understand the concept. And you understand the underlying structure of the microcontroller. Once you do that, you can make things faster. Instead of taking microseconds to do something, you start taking nanoseconds. You can actually write values faster than some microchips can even handle. That's pretty cool. I'm going to go over part of this super briefly, because in the future is where I'll do more advanced work with this. But basically, you know how you have a serial port, a parallel port, an HDMI port? It's basically just, it has so many pins and it's one thing. Think of that for your microcontroller. So you could have pins here, and this could be port A and port B. It's just conceptual. You know, whatever the, we don't care about how the transistors are laid out in there, but these would be the port A pins, these would be the port B pins. That's what I mean by a port. The Arduino Uno, all the Arduinos, are kind of fancy breakout boards. You know, a breakout board is where you've got a chip, but then it breaks it out and you've got the little headers you can put pins in, and it makes it easy to work with a chip that's otherwise just soldered. So that's kind of what an Arduino is. Instead of having Having this dip or even surface mount chip that you have to deal with somehow, you have, you know, you've got the capacitors and resistors and LEDs and bootloaders and all they're already on there and you just plug it in. So you want to understand this, but the Arduino software handles the actual details of interfacing with the hardware. So when you say, I want to work with port B, then you just do it in software. You don't actually have to do any hardware. So that's great. But that's what I mean by a port. It's just a collection of pins on the microcontroller because it's like a 28 pin. Yeah, here's one of them. I got a tube of them, but I don't know if you can see, but it's like half the length of my finger. The, the microprocessor, it's long. It's got a lot of pins. So it's got ports, which are just collections of eight pins. And in the Arduino software, let's say port B. Port B is a variable in the software. It's an eight bit variable. And if you want to change a value, let's say you've already set up a pin as digital output. All you want to do is you want to say port B, the first pin of port B, I want to set it high. You could do port B equals one. The vertical bar equals, that's the OR operation bitwise. So you add in bit one. If you wanted to set it to zero, then you would do an ampersand. I can't draw an ampersand properly, but you could do ampersand equals OXFE, that's hexadecimal, which is so anything and zero is zero, anything and one is unchanged. And then if you want to toggle it, you do the XOR operation. So what this does is it reads this value and XORs it with one, and that will flip. A zero becomes one, one becomes zero. So you can directly manipulate the hardware register with simple bitwise operations, and it will generate assembly language instructions that directly read and write that hardware register with no function calls whatsoever, if you know what you're doing. So 
Hopefully you understood some of that. If you didn't, just take my word for it, and I will do future videos on how this actually works and go into much more detail. But for right now, I just wrote a little program. All it does is it flip bit one and loop. Whoop. It's a while loop. All it does is it takes the current port B, flips the first bit, does it again, does it again, does it again. The idea being, how fast can the Arduino Uno at Mega 328P actually digital write? Let's find out. So here I have my oscilloscope. All it's going to do is measure. I have the Arduino Uno here, and I have connected the probe. The ground wire of the probe is in the ground of the Arduino, and the positive end is in a digital pin. It's plugged into a USB wall charger. If I turn it on, we see this. It's a square wave. It's a messy square wave, actually. Let me zoom in. It doesn't look too good. It's a very clearly defined square wave. But if we zoom in a little bit, we can see this charging curve here. Not a charge, well, it's, a, it's capacitance anyway. Capacitance and RF interference. You know me and, and having RF interference in my little breadboard setup. But it's very clearly a square wave, which means I have achieved my goal. I'm flipping a bit, flipping a bit, flipping a bit, and that's a square wave. What's the voltage? Well, here it is with one division from 0 volts to 5 volts, so it's the 5 volt square wave. Perfect. Exactly what we wanted. Now let me make it a little more clearly visible here. There, lovely wave. What's the frequency? Well, if I take my time domain here, and if I stretch it out, four divisions. So this is the time it takes to flip the bit from flipping a bit. We're not interested in the full wave, we're just interested in how long it takes to flip a bit, flip a bit. That's what I'm doing every time. The divisions are 78 nano seconds. 78 times 4 is about 312 nanoseconds. So if we invert that, we get the time to switch. So roughly 3.2 megahertz. That's right, I said megahertz. The microcontroller operates at about 16 megahertz. So if I divide that in, I get about 4.992. 16 megahertz divided by 3.2-ish megahertz is about 5. It's, if you round off, it's about 5. So it seems to be taking about 5 cycles of the microcontroller to switch. And it's definitely switching. There's interference, there's nastiness, but it's not like it's half switching, it's not like it's angled or anything. It's nice, hard switches. Now, I might be able to go faster, but I don't think it's practical because in the real world, you're gonna be doing something. You're not just gonna switch this. If you need a square wave, you just, just get an oscillator or something. Faster digital writing will make your code faster, but you still have other code. Five cycles, five instructions? That's fast. So the answer to the title of the video is, it switches fast. Five cycles, five CPU instructions. What could it be doing? What could those instructions be? I don't know. And I do want to look into that in the future, but I'm going to take an educated guess because I do understand some assembly code. So we have the hardware register, port B. So within the microcontroller, we can refer to port B as a register. You know, a register is chip with however many bits, right? You know, they'd be in the, the microcontroller, but still it's a register. And then you'd have a math register and another one. Like if you wanted to add two numbers, you'd put one there and one there and say add and you put the result there or something. This is how assembly language works. You have registers, which are collections of bits, and you put things in those registers, and then the instructions say, work with these registers. Because you don't just tell, I mean, a super advanced CPU like a modern Intel, you might have an instruction that's like, here's two pointers to memory locations, add the numbers. But it's incredibly unlikely. Now, you might, I don't know. But usually what you have to do is load something into the math registers. Like the floating point unit is going to have a certain number of 80-bit registers, and you load things in there, and then you tell it to do stuff and you take it back out. So that's how it works. So let's say my instruction is port B X or with one, this flips the first bit, the lowest order bit, and then jump. And we jump there. Just do it over and over and over and over and over forever. We don't even check a condition. We just jump. It's like while true in code. Well, how might this work? Well, we're doing a math operation. So we need to load it into registers. So the first instruction would copy, let's say from port B to math one. And this is an instruction you'd expect it to have because you know, you'd, this could be an input mode. And so, or some of the pins could be an input mode. So you copy it in here and do binary operations, bitwise operations to see which pins are high or low. So I'd expect that. So one instruction might be load B into M1. Then you could say load one into M2. Then you could say X or. Let's say the result is now in math one. So we want to say M1 
into B, then jump and jump there. I don't know if this is how it works. This could be completely wrong. And you may say, well, if you don't even know, why'd you waste our time? It's still learning, it's still a process. This is called coming up with a hypothesis. Think about it. You have a little knowledge about assembly language. You have a little knowledge about how hardware works. And the number we got was five. And here's five. Even if I'm wrong, I still feel good because I got something that could be right. <laughs> it makes sense. Anyway. So the entire video could technically have been me saying, it switches really freaking fast. Bye, have a nice day. But as one viewer accused me of a while ago, I do just like hearing the sound of my own voice. It's not like I have a cat to talk to after all. So anyway, this is just a, a dip into the Arduino world of assembly language and making code that is closer to the actual microprocessor. Fun times ahead, for now. I'll be seeing you.